Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. I'm not on the homestead right now. I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, south of Tulsa, actually. We're going to be doing a meet and greet at Smitty's Garage, November 1st. That's Wednesday night. <laughs> Think about it for a second. Wednesday night, November 1st at 7 o'clock at night, Smitty's Garage in Jinx, Oklahoma. J-E-N-K-S, Oklahoma. Okay, um, It's south of Tulsa. Uh, there's going to be, a, I've said before many times on my channel that one of the uh, career paths that you can do if you're looking for something, the homesteaders out there who are farmers, ranchers who want to always have a business model that's always going to be profitable. Uh, what I've seen work over and over again during the last 10 years is butchering. People who know how to butcher, people who want to open up a, a butchering company, they, are, they have so much work, they don't know what to do with themselves. And it, that's remained true over the years. And so um, there's a, a new company that's coming out uh, here soon, south of Tulsa. And uh, we're going to be butchering three steers tomorrow. Probably get, a, get a, some video for you on that, so stay tuned. I'll probably release that to the patrons first. But that's what I'm doing in Oklahoma. But if you want to come out for the meet and greet, that's tomorrow night, November 1st, Smitty's Garage, 7 o'clock. Okay, here's the deal. Um, there's been a number of articles coming out in the last month or so that have really hit homeschooling very, very hard. And a lot of people are not hearing about it because there's so much going on with the war in Ukraine, all of the stuff going on in Gaza that's really dominating the news right now. But I'm telling you guys, homeschoolers, you guys are under attack because the, the bureaucracy um, that is the Department of Education and all its tentacles that of where that reaches has been severely threatened by so much of the pandemic stuff that happened where so many parents pulled their kids out of the school systems. They pulled their, their kids out of the school systems really for two reasons. Number one, the curriculum they saw for the first time with their own eyes. They were horrified at the value of the curriculum that their kids were being taught in the public schools because the public schools sent their kids home with all this curriculum to do at home. Parents saw it for the first time and were like, this is garbage. Why am I sending my kids to public school when this the curriculum is just garbage? And then they saw how low the bar was. And they're like, my kids are never going to succeed if the bar is set this low. I can't, I'm not, I'm pulling my kids out of this. And so the public school system has been on the defensive for the last couple of years, and they're now going on the offensive, trying to reclaim some of that lost territory back. Let's get into it. I have a couple articles I want to share. I'm going to do those in different videos. And then at some point, I, I know you guys, some of you guys are really wanting to me to share with you what I'm using for a curriculum now because we switched gears this last year. I'm going to do that when I get back to the homestead, okay? So stay tuned for that. I promise it's coming. Um, but I want to get to this first article uh, here today, and then we'll get into another one at a later date when I get back. Why Middletown is hesitant to let homeschool kids play sports. Now, there's some reading between the lines that you got to do with this article. It says, here's a summary of a meeting that was held last Thursday between the school district and Middleton homeschool parents. Now, this came out October 23rd, so about a week ago. It says, Middleton, New Jersey, last Thursday, Middletown School Board Vice President Jacqueline Tobacco <laughs> <laughs> met with homeschool parents who are asking the district to let their kids join school sports teams and clubs. And it talks about who was all there and everything. It says the meeting last for, lasted for just over two hours from 10 a.m. to shortly after noon. Now on Monday, Tobacco discloses to the Middletown public what was said and read to the very bottom for a response from one of the most outspoken homeschool parents making this request. Okay, now. Here's where we get into some of the, you got to read between the lines, and I'm going to help you with this here in just a minute. The situation is not just do we want to be nice and let those kids play or not, which I think is how it's being portrayed, said Tobacco. It's not as simple as should the board make an emotional decision and let the children play. If it was simply an emotional decision, we all, of course, would, would say let the children play. So a lot of you homeschoolers out there understand and know that your kids are homeschooled at home. You have your own thing, whatever you're doing there. And then you see some of the other extracurricular activities that the public school system or maybe even other schools, you know, you know, have. And you want to partake in that. And some of these school districts allow you to do that. They say, OK, come on in. Well, they're turning off that. They're, they're, letting, they're basically closing those doors now. And so I've seen this more and more over the last couple of months. Um, more schools are saying, no, we can't do that. Public schools are saying, no, we can no longer do this. And we're going to get into why. 
in a minute, but let's see what reasons they are giving. First, it's not just homeschool kids, Tobacco said. There are actually three distinct groups of students who seek to join Middletown public school sports teams. It's Middletown children who are homeschooled, okay? Several kids who are in accredited all virtual schools. That's basically the same thing. That's something like, uh, you know, Liberty Academy like we used to use. Uh, several kids who are in tuition-based private schools that started as a pod during the pandemic. That school is not accredited, but several Middletown families send their children there. Again, something that's not part of the public school system. Tobacco said she honestly does not know how many students in total want to play Middletown sports clubs. But it's not just though in those three, three groups. If we allow people who pay tuition to private schools also to come join our sports teams, does that extend to CBA students, who, like it's a Christian a Brothers Academy, a Catholic school, or other schools? So the excuse the school is giving is, well, if we let you homeschoolers in, then we've got to let everyone else in too. You know, all those kids and all those kids and all those kids, and we just can't handle all those kids. You know, here's the reality. Here's what I have always heard growing up, you know, going to school myself and, you know, being part of some bigger schools and some smaller schools throughout my life and seeing other kids be part of smaller schools and bigger schools. Coaches always want the largest talent pool that they can draw from possible. Tell me I'm wrong in the comments below. I'm not wrong on this. Coaches always, if they want to win, if coaches really want to win, and coaches, most coaches really want to win. I mean, you're not doing this. Maybe some people are doing it for money. Maybe they're just doing it because they're bored. Coaches who want to win want to draw from the largest talent pool possible. So this excuse is a bunch of crap. <laughs> well, if we let your kids play, then we have to let all these other kids play. Let me read you the response of the homeschool parent, and then I'm going to tell you what's really going on here. Now, it says up here, tobacco stress, the district is looking for solutions to this problem. And here's how the homeschool mom responded. I am surprised they disclosed all of this after asking us to be patient as we waited for their response, she said Monday. In response to Tobacco's comments, I can go line by line and respond to each point they made with a different perspective as we did during our October 19th meeting, but their input shows they ultimately do not want our homeschooled children to be included in sports clubs and sports, school sports and clubs. I believe the Board of Education members are elected officials in our community that should seek the best interests of all students in the district, not just those enrolled in public schools. Until we get more board members who feel that way, nothing will change. First off, she makes the connection that these school board members are just throwing excuses at her. I, we'll get to that in a second. But first, it is a public school system. They should be able to decide if they want to let your kids in or not. Let them be, the, let them have their domain. Let them have their little system. People are jumping ship out of that system, so let it fail. Let, the, let it be the way it is. But here's the reality. The reason they don't want your homeschool kids playing with their public school kids and their sports and all their extracurricular activities is because if they do, you will spread the disease. And the disease is called self-reliance. <laughs> because in reality, what is, what's going to happen here? Your kids are going to go to those other kids' sporting events. You're going to take part in those. The parents of the homeschool kids are going to get to know the parents of the public school kids. The parents of the public school kids are going to be like, so why do you decide to homeschool? Well, let me tell you why. I, I want to give my kids a better curriculum. I'm going to give my kids better opportunities. I want to give, give my kids a higher standard to meet so that they're more successful in their lives. And these other public school parents are going to be like, oh, yeah, you know what? I want that for my little Johnny and my little Susie, too. And the disease called self-reliance will spread, and the district does not want that. Because in reality, the district gets paid for how many seats are filled every day at school. They get federal dollars that are based on what seats are filled. And right now, they're hemorrhaging federal dollars hemorrhaging federal dollars. Tell me I'm wrong in the comments below. I'm not wrong. <laughs> I already know I'm not wrong. <laughs> but that's what's happening here. They're saying, well, you know, if we let your kids play, then we got to let all these other kids play. And the real reason is because we don't want your disease to spread amongst other people who are dependent right now on the system because we're dependent on that system's federal dollars. Again, tell me I'm wrong. 
anyway, I have another article I want to share with you guys. They are the articles coming out about homeschooling have been really interesting in the last few weeks. Again, I know there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Our economy is in the middle of we're in absolute chaos in our economy. We have the war in Ukraine going again. We have the the stuff in you know Gaza. All the stuff is happening right now. There's so much happening right now. So many other little things. But I'm t- and I'm keeping an eye. I'm trying to keep an eye on as many things as I can because I you know I'm a I'm a sheepdog. Okay, I scan. That's what I do. I get somewhere and I scan. I'm looking for what's going on. You know, while they're all talking about this, I'm like, what's going on over here? I'm trying to always keep an eye out on what's happening. And I'm telling you right now, they're really ramping up the attacks on the homeschool community because they've been on the defense for a long time and they're trying to take back now. They're trying to take back some lost ground. What do you think? Leave a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. If you're a homeschool, if you're public school, it doesn't matter. Leave your comments below. I want to hear about it. All right, guys. Um, hey, listen, if you – do you remember – Um. It was 2005. Nancy Pelosi was really upset and called George Bush's budget deficit budget deficit reckless. She called it reckless. <laughs> A 427 billion dollar budget deficit. Reckless. Do you know what our deficit is today? Bank of America revised its deficit expectations higher for coming years, noting that the U.S. overspending will grow to $2 trillion by fiscal year 2026 from $1.7 in 2023. A major factor driving this upswing will be higher interest expenses on U.S. borrowing, forcing the Treasury to keep issuing more bonds. What does that mean? It means we are absolutely head head above you know, debt. And the way we're trying to meet that debt is to print more bonds in order and which is going to raise interest rates even. See, it's a, it's a, it's a never ending cycle, which, and the result will always be hyperinflation. That's where we're headed. We used to complain about a $427 billion deficit. Where is Nancy Pelosi today on Joe Biden's $1.7 trillion deficit, yearly deficit? We are now over $33.5 trillion in debt. There is no stopping this train. If you do not, if you still have your money in paper-denominated assets and you want to get into something physical, you can go to AmericanGoldEscape.com. AmericanGoldEscape.com and Genesis Gold Group will help you get out. They will help you escape. It's time to do it. The time to do it is now. You are past time to do it. You are living on borrowed time. American goldescape.com. See you next time on the homestead. Bye. If you've watched my channel, you know that I'm a fan of owning precious metals in times of economic turmoil. The reason being is because I'm an avid reader of history. One of the biggest objections to buying precious metals that I get goes something like this. Why buy precious metals? After all, you can't eat gold and silver. Actually, this is incorrect. Never has there been a time throughout all of human history where a producer of food has turned down the use of gold and silver when trying to make a sale. Never, not once. Gold and silver have always been used when fiat money fails and fiat money always eventually fails. There are countless times in history where governments hard up for real money took silver and copper coins from the past and then placed a countermark on the coin and then placed that old coin back into circulation. It didn't matter that it was an old coin of a different time and place. What mattered was the metal content. In the 1820s, the farmers in the German town of Notzheim would find Roman silver denarii so often in their fields when plowing that they would save them and use them to buy beer at the local tavern. In the 1840s, around the French town of Usur, Roman silver and gold coins were so numerous that people used them to pay bakers, butchers, and other merchants for their food goods. These are coins that were long gone in official circulation from the Roman Empire, but people used them anyway to pay for food even above their own official state-issued currency. Yes, you can eat gold and silver because gold and silver always, always buys food. If you have fiat paper savings banked away and you want to find a more historically reliable way to safeguard that wealth, this website can help you. AmericanGoldEscape.com gives you information and a way to reach out so that an expert can help you and show you how to escape. We are over $33 trillion in debt and rising rapidly. There is no saving this sinking ship. Visit AmericanGoldEscape.com to learn more. Linked in the description below.
Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>